From the studio that brought you Secretary with Guns comes a new adventure starring French Maid with Swords. From the publishers that sold you Kingdom Hearts 3 Heart. Heart. Hearts. 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 Heart. Comes a game actually worth buying. Near Autumn. Near Automata has become our most requested game, especially after we said that Detroit Become MLK2 Electric Boogaloo failed to examine artificial intelligence in a way that would require David Cage to use regular intelligence. Boom. Roasted. <laughs> and I gotta say, you guys were right. Near Automata is probably the best backseat gaming experience I've had all year. If you haven't played this game yet, don't worry. There will be a spoiler warning before I analyze the plot. Until then, these are some of the things you might consider a spoiler in this review. But this isn't a review of Near Automata. This is a review of what it's like to question existence and free will. <laughs> This is a review of what it's like to live with someone who plays Nier Automata. I went into this game blinder than the main character. How does she see? The only thing I knew was there's an ending for each letter of the alphabet, and the true ending is letter E. If you're wondering who told me that, the answer is... Endings F through Z are actually just game over screens. Sometimes we'd get one on accident, like by going the wrong way. I don't know what I did. <laughs> Mountain too high? We just got ending H, okay. We did it. <laughs> Sometimes my boyfriend would get one for being an idiot, like by removing his Android's operating system. Oh, okay. <gasps> Do we have to start over? Most of the time though, we got them simply because they're fun to discover. And seeing the screen fade to black after we ate a mackerel or something had us like, What's the letter? What's the letter? What's the letter? What's the letter? The letter of the day. It's the letter of the day. But rest assured, Nier fans, we heard your prayers. And after 25 hours, we reached ending E, meaning we're legally allowed to make this video. Nier Automata integrates multiple genres into its gameplay, drawing obvious comparisons to Family Party, 90 Great Games Party Pack for Nintendo Wii. It's got open world exploration, RPG character progression, run and gun beat em up side scrolling, third person hack and slash action, 2D Mortal Kombat fights, and bullet hell of the vertical, horizontal, and isometric variety. So basically, it's Breath of the Witcher, Contra May Cry fighting asteroids, and it's awesome. It sounds risky combining 90s arcade action with such a deep, emotional driven narrative, but they nailed it harder than they nailed 9S to this wall. Why does 9S dress like a pirate? That's what you're worried about I right now? Although, during our playthrough of Route B, my boyfriend preferred hacking over slashing <laughs> <laughs> and putting this in my eyeballs for 10 hours straight made falling asleep that night a psychedelic nightmare. The only real complaint I have about the gameplay is straight out of my Dead Cells review. Lots of times my boyfriend would laugh and say, whoa, did you see that? And I'd be like, well, my eyes were open and pointed at the TV, but the only way I can describe what I saw is diarrhea Christmas lights, so no. This game has such bad diarrhea Christmas lights. Like, if Near Automata was at a party, it would be a go-home situation. Sometimes even my boyfriend wasn't sure if he was winning or not. Berserker mode. Wow, oh. super saint. Oh no! Well, that, that didn't work out so good. <laughs> wow, this is, what the heck am I looking at? Berserker mode was so cool! <laughs> And for having so much diarrhea on the screen, you'd think some of the bullet hell sections would be more exciting to watch. You're in a good spot. I'm in a really good I'm spot. Not getting hit by any of those tomatoes. This is why it's called near a tomato. Because you're just near it. Because they fire tomatoes at you. Wow, I, I literally did nothing. You didn't move at all. <laughs> but don't judge a game by its tomatoes. The visual beauty outside of combat often gave us pause. Ooh, look at this place, baby. Wow! Whoa, Whoa balloons. This is what my boyfriend calls a Martin Scorsese moment because he feels the urge to stop and look around like it's a movie. What's Martin Scorsese? Ready? Mm -hmm. Martin Scorsese. Go! Oh, ah! <laughs> my favorite part of the game though, and probably favorite part of any game on Girlfriend Reviews so far, is the music.
and the cute robots. And when the cute robots do the music, it makes me want to cry. Oh my god. Oh. Stop. Are you kidding me with that kid? The three and a half hours of tracks composed for Near Automata never fail to capture the essence of the environment or be absolute bangers in their own right. Every time my boyfriend went to the amusement park, I'd turn up the TV like... Some of the songs are simultaneously connected to the narrative and gameplay in ways that gave me the gooses, like this fabulous boss battle with a mechanical opera singer. As she sings a beautiful song, she also performs a deadly dance with her attacks. Projectiles leap when bells chime. Laser spin at the first crescendo. And the player must learn the steps, becoming her partner in a dance to the death. But what makes the music of Nier Automata truly unforgettable is the plot it accompanies, the tragic journey of our heroes, the heart-wrenching innocence of the friends we made, and the somber history of our abandoned home. Here come the spoilers, folks. If you think you might play this game, you really don't want my stupid video to ruin it. This game made me cry, you guys. Don't let the sexy android thongs fool you. Wow. Sexy. <laughs> there is an emotionally complex and philosophically rich narrative in this triumphant piece of software, which coincidentally is about complex emotions and philosophy evolving in software. In fact, it's so full of references to great thinkers and their schools of thought that, I'll be honest, you'd probably have a better conversation about this game with your local doctor of philosophy. Welcome to Baskin Robbins. Would you like to try our mango fruit blast? But I'll do my best, so here we go. The game starts with a pretty spooky quote from 2B, the first playable character. We are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. I often think about the god who blessed us with this cryptic puzzle and wonder if we'll ever have the chance to kill him. And apparently, my boyfriend thought God was this moose. A moose! I'm gonna kill it. No, baby! But what I think is that for 2B and all android life, God is their creators, the humans who have been exiled to the moon. And that would make the machines God, the aliens. So both sides of the war are fighting for an invisible creator in the sky, which is a tale as old as time. However, during Route A, many of the machines you meet have forsaken their God and put down their weapons in favor of peace and sexy time. They're doing sex. They're boning. They're just Look at that one, cunnilingus. Let's take them out. Oh my god! Oh! Whoa! <laughs> Their human-like emotions were thought to be impossible, so perhaps it's an alien trick. But then you find out from Nero and Dante that the aliens were dead the whole time, like Bruce Willis. So, the machines really were practicing free will. And to make you feel extra bad about killing them, Route B starts you out as a cute robot who misses his brother. Ooh! I'm a robot! Adventures of Bucket Boy. Oh! Then you have to play the whole story again as 9S. This is my new workout, guys. Who can look into their sad, tormented souls and show you how they're just misunderstood homies trying to find meaning in a godless universe. This drives some of them a little cray cray and they drink the Kool Aid. Oh, God! Oh, I don't like this Jonestown. Become as gods. Wow. That's <laughs> harsh. <laughs> but guess what? The humans were dead the whole time too! Again, like Bruce Willis. The Yorha military organization has been lying to you, dog, because without humans to fight for, you have no other purpose. And now you have to find meaning in a godless universe. That's called nihilism, bro. Or is it? I don't know. I never worked at Baskin Robbins. Dude. Now that you're super depressed about life having no purpose, how about some dead kids? I fear for the children. Let us hurry to them. Oh no. Somebody got in there and all the kids are dead. Uh-oh. Let's just not go in. Get, go! I, uh, listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. If something sad happens right now, do not ruin wow, the Wow, look at this scene. Let's get in Martin Scorsese. Oh my but guess what? M. Night Shyamalan has one more twist. In the final battle, A2 reveals to 9S that 2B is actually 2E, as in E for Executioner. Her purpose is to kill 9S every time he learns the secret about humanity, and she's done it hundreds of times. Dude, that's the never-ending spiral. I get it. Whoa.
Then, in the best credit sequence of all time, you get to take your anger out on the nihilistic a-holes who made this depressing game. Square Enix, come here, you. Why'd you make Kingdom Hearts 3 so crappy? <laughs> Ow! Final Fantasy VII Remake better be good, you jerk! <laughs> Diarrhea Christmas lights are too strong, so the save files of other players come to your rescue, and together you carry the weight of the world. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh, the, uh, the music. They added more choir. Yeah. Like, it's like everyone's singing with me. Oh god, I'm gonna cry. And finally, the game breaks the fourth wall to present you with a difficult decision. This decision actualizes the same inner conflict that every cute little robot, every sexy android, and every human has experienced. What is the meaning of your life? Will you keep your game save, rendering the hours you spent playing meaningless, but for your own self-indulgence and pride? Or will you sacrifice your game save for the greater good, to aid another person you'll never meet in a thankless act of meaningful love? We chose to sacrifice our game save, but also left kind of a mean message for whoever deletes it. Don't, baby, don't make it sad. The end. I wish that someplace somehow that I could save everyone.